Uh, pretty good. Um, we had a problem yesterday with uh, Tav. I know there's some rumours circulating that he's going to be missing for six weeks and a couple of months. They aren't true. Uh, he'll probably be missing for a couple of weeks, all being well. He's had a little minor procedure around his appendix, which we've sorted out yesterday. Um, the small procedure went really well, so he'll be missing for a couple of weeks. Uh, Phil Hollander's progressing, but um, still in the boot uh, and still on crutches, so that'll be a slow one. Glenn Middleton's got an issue with his foot. That happened in a reserve game here a few days ago against Motherwell. Um, he's had a scan, so we're just waiting for confirmation on, on the length of that injury, but he'll be missing in the short term as well. Um, Greg Stewart come off training yesterday with a tight calf. Um, he is in the scanner machine as we speak. Maybe Glenn's issue affect whether he's Possibly. Possibly, because there was a few things bubbling away uh, with, with Glenn. Um, so that may or may not put them people off uh, who we were in contact with. Um, but um, we don't predict he'll be missing for too long. So um, maybe not, maybe not. I don't know. And there's a, a team skill, a more exact team skill in Philip. Maybe, maybe back from his injury. Where are we now? We're coming up to what, the middle of January. Um, I still think he'll be at least a month. Um, that's... You know, don't hold me to that. That's just to give you something to work with. How big a blow is the Tavernier one, or is it more? It could have been worse. It's actually quite lucky. It's only a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think these situations can be worse. I think they can be up to six weeks and a couple of months if there's complications, if the appendix burst inside. But that wasn't the case. Um, we've managed to get to the situation really early, um, so it was at a very early stage. So I think when that happens and you get in, and the right person gets in and sorts it out. It's looking more like. Uh, a couple of weeks rather than a couple of months, which is good news, but no one wants to lose the captain for one game, never mind a couple of weeks. Was it a sudden thing? No, he's totally fine in Dubai. Flew back, had a day off, and then the morning we were about to come in, he um, was just getting a bit of an abdominal pain. Wasn't sure what it was. Call a doctor. Thankfully, we've got one of the best doctors in the business who uh, sent him to a specialist straight away, and we got to the problem pretty early. In terms of uh, ins and outs, Stephen, are you, I know you were talking about players leaving. Mm -hmm. We talked about Greg Doherty and Jamie Murphy. Can you update us on that, please? Yeah, well, I think um, there's a real serious club in uh, for, for Doherty. Um, negotiations are ongoing. It, it's getting closer and closer. Uh, I predict something could happen in the coming days. Um, with Jamie, it's a, a similar situation, but maybe not as close as... Doherty's, um, but I predict that they will go out uh, hopefully in a couple of days for their sake so they can get play, playing football as quick as possible. Um, but, you know, these negotiations sometimes take longer than I want them to take. Um, but in an ideal scenario, I want to see them playing competitive football in, in the coming days rather than weeks. I know Greg's spoken in the past about he doesn't want to give up mm. you know, he's, he's dream of playing here. This is a club he's supposed to avoid. And it's a message to them again, go play games and come back and show that you can still play a part of it. Yeah, listen, I think he, he had a, a real strong loan at Shrewsbury. I think Shrewsbury done ever so well with him. Um, he went down there and got team of the year. Um, so he's had a lot of attention around that league. Um, we've also had some championship interest as well. Um, but this is a player that we respect very much because of the way he's gone about it. Um, he's done, he's given it his maximum effort to try and push the lads that are in the starting eleven uh, and the lads that are in the squad to try and get a place. But um, unfortunately, it hasn't happened. So the best thing for him at this stage of his career is to go and play. Certainly from now till the end of the season, then we'll analyse it again in pre-season. Stephen, as a manager, in this January window, how difficult is it to <coughs> turn your squad to the number that you find suitable? I think it's a question I'd like to answer probably come the end of January because we're, we're hopeful to, to, to trim it. Um, um, the reason we are trimming it is because we want to be respectful to the players that need to play. The squad is too big at the moment, but it is something that I wanted to do in the summer because of what happened last year. I felt as if I wanted to be more bloated than light because of the options we had in certain situations after injuries and suspensions in certain games last year. So um, I think it was the right thing to be a bit bloated at the beginning of the season, but now... Um, where we are in the season, uh, the games that are left to play and, and how the team and the squad's looking, I'm, I'm, I'm more confident and relaxed with people going out to play and swimming it down. Do you think the introduction of Ross Wilson has helped move players on? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really 
um, analyse that situation. Uh, Ross is doing a, a fantastic job. I've been really impressed um, with him since he's come in. The relationship's getting stronger and stronger daily. Um, he's certainly on the same page as myself and the staff. And um, he's working tirelessly to help me trim the squad um, and also work on things for the future as well to try and make the team and the squad better. Uh, the fact that you are leaving, does that free up your possibility of bringing more players in than you maybe thought would be good in the winter? No, I don't think so. Um, I've always said it'll be a quiet uh, month in terms of uh, incomings, um, and uh, nothing's changed on that. Um, unless something big happened um, to, to, to one of the players, then I don't predict anyone to come in. What are your thoughts ahead of Stranraer? Well, it, it's an important game for us because you know it's a competition that we um, we want to win. And we want to uh, go all the way to Hamden in as well. You know, the experience of Hamden in the League Cup has given us a real good taste. Um, and I'm sure the players echo this, that we want to go all the way. So we'll treat Stranra with the utmost respect. Um, it's a home game. It's the first game uh, back after the small break. So all the players are excited. I certainly am. And we want to get our rhythm back as quick as we can. Because, you know, this time last year, we had a setback with the cancellation of the um, the Calvin Beat game. And... Um, Obviously, a setback at Kilmarnock. I didn't feel as if we we stayed in our rhythm throughout the game. So we're hoping to, um, you know, start this second part of the fixtures uh, in a better rhythm and in a better place. I know Nathan Patterson was given his chance to impress in Dubai. Is it hard to blood in youngsters when the title race is so close and every game is meaningful? <coughs> I think it makes it a bit more tougher. Of course, it does. Yeah, but. Um, it's pretty simple, my message to the academy players. If they're good enough, and they're good enough consistently, and they come over when they train with us or they get the opportunities, if they show that they're better than the people that are in the place who've got the shirt, we, we, we'll look at it and analyse it very seriously. I'm someone who's from an academy. I want to give them uh, an opportunity and a taste for it. Um, but I'm not someone who buys into all this, all oh, my pathways blocked, and... Um, Oh, but my agent's got seven other teams waiting for me here, there and everywhere. I'm not interested in it at all. If you, if you want to play for Rangers and you're good enough, you'll get there. Will you use your squad for this game, Stephen, do you think? Yeah. Yes, you'll see, some, you'll see some changes. Certainly from the last 11 I picked uh, at Celtic Park, you'll see some changes. We've actually got two games here over the weekend. So we've got one uh, on Friday night and then we've got a, a bounce game here behind closed doors, which enables me to get minutes into all the players' legs so everyone's ready. Um, for when the league starts as well. But yeah, you'll see some changes, but you'll also see a strong side that's selected to play Sunra. Stephen, there's stories today that the SFA are set to ban heading for youngsters under the age of 12 in order to lessen the risks of uh, players developing dementia in their life. Just wonder if, if you had any thoughts on that and what you thought. Yeah, well, I think, I think it's certainly something that uh, I, I back in terms of the uh, dementia and, and the seriousness of it. Um, but I think there's um, there's ways that you can do it around banning heading totally for, for under-12s. Um, I used to love heading balls from probably the age of four. Um, so I wouldn't take it away from them completely because they're watching the heroes every single day on the TV, heading, scoring goals, um, top, top players throughout the leagues, throughout the world. But there's certainly things that you can help them with in terms of maybe making the ball smaller or lighter uh, or doing heading in a different way uh, without using uh, the, the heavy case balls, for sure. Is that a lot of you think about this? You know, obviously, I think it's for like professional footballers have got a three times greater risk of developing this in their life. Is it something that you Yeah, the, the, the numbers are, are scary. They are alarming. Um, that's why uh, I, I agree in, in the seriousness that it's getting taken. Um, but I, I, I also uh, think that we can do it in different ways uh, without using your normal match day ball every single day throughout the sessions when we're talking about these babies or under 14s, whatever number you want to put on it. We do certainly need to help them and support them for sure. Do you think it's going to fundamentally change the way we develop players then? What do you mean? In terms of if you can't hit a ball in training? Well, this is what I'm saying to you. I, I think um, you can still have them heading balls and the technique. Uh, and the timing of going to jump, um, what positions to attack, but you can maybe help them in terms of the, the lightness of the ball. Uh, you know and I know you've got sponge balls, you've got volleyballs that wouldn't have the impact that maybe a normal case ball would have. So we, we as a football 
Uh, every family, we all have to analyse what's the best way because we don't want to affect the development, but we do need to take it serious because the numbers are too high. George, I don't know if we should read into the fact that you're sat here in front of all this, but that's maybe a, a game. He's starting against John Ryan. <laughs> 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 is this a good chance for you to, to go out and impress and show your manager what you can do? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I've been, I feel like I've been patient and, you know, I've been waiting for, say, a game like this. Um, so, no, it'd be good to get out on the pitch and show what I can do. Is it almost better sweet because, you know, you don't want to be sat in the side lanes, but the team are doing well and that's why you've not been able to get into the side? Yeah, you know, I'm not. You know, stupid. The, the lads who have been playing centre half have been doing like class. Nico's coming and done excellent. So you know, I can't argue why I'm not playing. Uh, I know the the position I stand in. So um, I've just got to be patient and uh, hopefully I can show a bit tomorrow. Do you think the Lions made a good spell for yourself because you got that sort of solid week of training and then this week as well to you know just get in amongst and show exactly what you can do? Yeah, it was good. Um, like really enjoyed Dubai. Um, no, it was a good experience for me and uh, it was good to get some minutes uh, at the game as well. Can you take inspiration from the way that Nico's handled his situation? Obviously, he's been the team at the start of the season, lost his players, but this kept his head down, worked hard, and he gets the opportunity in your performance. Yeah, you know, uh, Nico's someone I look up to and you know, watch and learn off in training. Um, so I do look at his, say, journey and how he's dealt with it this season, and it's something I can definitely learn off.